guys, it's Sam, and this is my spoiler-free review of the entire Fallen Kingdom series by Morgan Rhodes. So Fallen Kingdoms is a six-book YA fantasy series, and it takes place in the fantastical world of Mitica, and this is a smaller island-type nation that is broken into three parts, Limeros, Pelasia, and Aranos. And the first book, Fallen Kingdoms, follows our four main characters. Magnus de Mora, who is the prince in Limeros. And Limeros is seen as a cold, unfeeling part of this world, and it is ruled by Magnus's father, King Gaius, who is an evil douche. And then we have Magnus' sister, Lucia, and she is the series' resident magic user. Then we have Cleo, and she is the princess from Arnos. And then we have Jonas, and he is from Pelasia. And this is the middle of Mitica, and they are kind of the disadvantaged group they are taken advantage of, and they are kind of living between Limeros and Arnos, and kind of not favored by either, and so he is part of a rebellion after some events that happened to him in the very beginning of the first book. And the whole kind of plot of this is that these characters get pulled into a quest to find the Kindred, which are elemental magic orbs that they all want to possess for some reason in order to kind of have more power, and everything kind of goes from there throughout the entirety of the series. So as many of you know, Fallen Kingdoms has been a staple on my channel for some time now. I first started reading it when I first joined Book 2 back in 2014, so it's been a long-standing thing here on my channel, and I actually did a review for the first three books in the series after that third one came out, so this is kind of the completion of the series at this point, now that the very last book is out. So I have a lot of videos on Fallen Kingdoms here on my channel, you've heard about it a lot over the years, and you can kind of see the evolution of the series and the evolution of my feelings on the series over time. So first off, I'm going to talk about the world building. This is a very classic fantasy world. This is your kind of world that has magic, not really magical creatures or anything. It's a very heavily magic-focused world, and it's very politically driven as well. So when the series first came out, it was being called a YA Game of Thrones. I think that did the series a disservice, because people went in expecting Game of Thrones level complexity and also some of the magical creatures in the way that you get in Game of Thrones and you just don't get that in here, but it does have kind of that political intrigue and the magic elements and all of that that you get in some of those other kind of high fantasy worlds, but it's not as epic in scale as something like Game of Thrones because that would be impossible. Those books are massive and have been going on for a very long time. So as the series goes on, the world does expand and you start to know a lot more about things with the magic, with how Lucia has her magic, and with this kind of elemental magic. If you're a fan of elemental magic, I think you'll enjoy this because you have a lot of that elemental magic. You have a lot of backstory of elemental magic with their gods and kind of this whole system of watchers, which are some immortals that end up watching the goings on of all the people. So you have that element in there. So I think if you like elementals and kind of otherworldly beings that are immortal, you're probably going to enjoy this. Also, if you enjoy a lot of competing powerhouses, as far as political intrigue, this has that element as well. Next, I'm going to talk about the characters. The characters, for me, are the high point of the series. I definitely started to fall in love with them, mostly in Rebel Spring and On, which is the second book, and you really start to fall in love with a lot of them, and they're all stubborn and rash and make really poor decisions a lot of times, but I still really love them for that, and I think the characters go through a lot. I like some character arcs more than others. My favorites of the whole series are Cleo and Magnus, but I think all of them end up going a really long way, and I really appreciate that about them. And there are a lot of side characters that get pulled in as well. I think that kind of muddies up the story a bit. I think that originally there were four POVs in the story. Towards the end, I think we had maybe eight at some point, and I think that made it very messy. Because you are really in those characters' heads, obviously, in their POV, and you don't have enough time later on in the series for really all the characters, and you really start to lose the protagonists a bit, I think, because even though you are following some of these other POVs, they ultimately aren't protagonists. They're still just side characters. So I think expanding it too much, making it too big of a multiple POV story, really took away from the story and weakened it a bit. But I really do like some of those side characters. I think my favorite side character is Felix, who is an assassin that shows up in the later books. So you do have some of those fun characters, and if you want to know more about them, you do get their POVs, most of their POVs, later on in the story, so that's a fun time. Another reason I think people compare this to Game of Thrones is because, in particular, in the beginning parts of the series, there is a lot of twisting and turning in character death. So be prepared that there are some characters that end up dying, and it can be pretty brutal, and the world can be pretty brutal, but again, I don't think it's as 
high of a kill rate and of a shock as like some of the Game of Thrones things, which is why I think that that's not really a very good comparison while I'm trying to lead you away from that comparison. But it has some similar beats in that some of these, you know, dangerous fantasy worlds kind of have that. So if you like those twisting, turning kind of stories where you don't really feel like everyone's very safe, then you probably will enjoy this as well. Lastly, I'm talk about the plot. These books are very fast paced and quick reads. Morgan has a writing style that just allows you to fly through the books. And that's always fun because I feel like I can read these books in like two or three days if I have the time to, which is just good for binge reading, especially now that all the books are out. I will say as far as the plot that I do feel personally that the series kind of lost its way a bit. Again, with all of the characters, I feel like the plot kind of weakened because you were following all these different character threads and all these different character stories. And you really got lost from the main point and there was some parts that were just kind of watered down and things that got a little bit muddled. I think the first four books are really great and they build up. I, my favorite of the series are Gathering Darkness and Frozen Tides, which are the third and fourth book in the series, and I think those are amazing and everything was going up and up from there. Then I think book five, Crystal Storm, was a huge stumble and that one really didn't do it for me. And Immortal Rain recovered a bit and I think will still be good for a lot of people who have read the series recently and are fans of it and just have that momentum, but I think since I had so much time spent kind of away from the series waiting for the books and whatever, it just kind of lost its speed for me, so I don't think that Immortal Rain fully recovered for me. But Immortal Rain is still more similar to the first books in the series and kind of follows some of those beats a little bit more, but I do think that the series got extended. I had heard that the series was originally supposed to be only four books and then it got pushed into six, so I think that there was a lot of filler in there. I think that's where some of the multiple POVs came from and some of these other threads that just didn't get enough time because they weren't originally as planned out. I feel like the first four books in the series have a lot more meat to them and are better constructed and that the last two kind of feel a little bit mashed together, which is really unfortunate. Also, there's a thing in particular in the last two books, I noticed it really a ton in Immortal Rain, which was a lot of telling instead of showing, which I don't feel like happened a lot in the first four books. I could just be looking at it with like rose tinted glasses, maybe I've gotten a little more critical of what I've read over the years. These are all things that change throughout the years. I've recently done a video on changing book taste and how that's okay and that that's natural and that happens, so I feel like this kind of applies here that Maybe I'm starting to notice more of this like craft stuff and telling instead of showing and stuff like that, but there's a lot of that in particular in Immortal Rain, which was really disappointing. Just characters kind of just telling you about things that just could have been shown, like telling you about their feelings for somebody in very like grandiose verbiage and stuff, and you're like, you could have shown that by your actions. I've been with you guys for six books now. I know these things, so there was a lot of that that I found very jarring and that just kind of pulled me out of the story a bit because I just don't think that that was a technique that needed to be used. And like I said, I do think there are some plot points that ultimately don't get wrapped up a ton. You didn't get a lot of time spent with certain characters because they got brought in kind of late and a lot of stuff about the ending just felt very rushed. I still think it was a pretty fulfilling ending. I do like kind of how the series ended up going. I do have some complaints about some certain things, so I will talk about that in discussion of the series, but Overall, I think that the finale matches up with the majority of the series and that most people that have been fans of the series are going to enjoy the entire thing. I still think it is worth reading. I think that you can go in with realistic expectations. This is not my favorite young adult fantasy series. I don't know if it necessarily ever was, but it was definitely up there. I mean, it was in like my top five young adult fantasy series. It still is probably up there. It's definitely still in my top 10 young adult fantasy series as of right now, as of the filming of this video, but I'm not sure it's going to stand the test of time for me personally, but I think it will for a lot of people. If the things I talked about in here, as far as the fast-paced writing, you know, the characters, stuff about the world, if this stuff appeals to you, then I think you'll really like this, but I don't think it's anything necessarily new or groundbreaking or anything, but it's still a very fun time. They're fun characters, and I overall really enjoy the series, and I'm glad that I finished it up and that I spent so much time with it. It still holds a very special place in my heart. I have met many friends because of our reading of Fallen Kingdoms, and it's still a special thing that I'm always going to associate with booktube, but it's just not my ultimate favorite series. But it's still something that I would recommend to a lot of people. So as far as my overall ratings of the books, again, you can go back and watch old reviews because I do have reviews and discussions on all the books through book five, but for simplicity's sake, so you don't have to do that. And some of these ratings have changed around over time a bit because of looking at it kind of as a whole series and kind of comparing ratings and stuff like that. So some of the ratings might not match exactly with my old videos, but this is over 
overall the ratings of the series and of the different books in the series for me. So Fallen Kingdoms is three stars, Rebel Spring is four stars, Gather Darkness and Frozen Tides are both five stars, Crystal Storm is 1.5 stars, and Immortal Rain is 2.5 to three stars. I still haven't quite set on a rating for that one but between 2.5 and 3. So as an overall series rating, I think overall I would give it like a 3.5 stars as a overall arc. So I am going to be doing a spoilery discussion on the series. It's mostly going to be on Immortal Rain because again I've done discussions on every single book in the series leading up so if you really want to know my thoughts in detail you can definitely check that out. But I'm going to talk about Immortal Rain and then my thoughts overall on the series and spoilery discussions on that. So I will link that on the screen. So comment down below let me know what you thought of Falling Kingdoms the series. It's over. It's so weird. I feel like we've been rushing towards this moment for so long now. It's crazy. But comment down below let me know what you thought of Fallen Kingdoms, the series. So thank you all for watching and I'll see all of you guys soon. Bye!